Welcome back to MSI 2023. T1 finding a win on the back of an incredibly dominant performance. Need to see if they can replicate that and bring us to a game five as BLG remain on match point. I'm so excited for this. I mean, look, the fact that we actually get T1 striking back in game three now, I really do think is going to give them a ton of momentum into this. And what we saw in game one was both these teams throwing absolute haymakers. I want to see the same coming into game four now. And need to see where the adaptation is going to be in the draft, because the difficulty of going down 0-2 is that that win that T1 got, they now have to keep winning without the luxury of side selection. Need to be able to adapt the draft on the fly and keep the mental strong. You can see Karia meditating, staying focused. He was getting a pep talk after game two from the coaching staff. Visualize the win. Visualize the win, boys. The comeback. Can they do it? T1, they always make finals. True. For the last couple of years, T1. Yeah, as long as they've had this lineup, never missed a final. Close here, though, versus BLG, versus Bin. And Bin did predict in his interview yesterday 3 1 versus yeah. T1, so we might just be following his script. We thought someone else wrote the script, it's Bin. <laughs> Potentially, we'll have to find out. Well, we'll have to see because it looks like at least a decent start here for BLG. Banning away that Cassante that was so good for Faker in the last one. Still sticking to the Jinx ban. Will BLG now back onto the blue? It'll be interesting to see if they can have a repeat performance from game one or if they'll fall behind again and push us that game five. Nautilus first pick here. Okay, so keeping the flex alive. And you talked about this for Yagao. This fits right into his wheelhouse utility, team focus pick, and champion. And oftentimes we've seen it sorry, banned with the uh, the Cassante, but with the Cassante gone, it makes it a little bit easier then for Yago to actually have that time in the middle. The faith that T1 have in their Zyra Khan, though, still stays strong, and they only double ban the jungle, so they get the Wukong this time around. Again, that big, big engaged possibility here. BLG, you assume the Lulu. I think it'll be the Zari Lulu, but it's going to be surprising to see exactly what the game plan now is, because when you think about it, Shun can't really go towards the Kindred. We've already seen how good Wukong is over the course of this game, uh, this tournament against this uh, uh, Kindred. So now you got to look at like, okay, Sichuanis, maybe we can go back towards something like Lee Sin, but you're definitely I, starting to go into a weird pool. And I love the Viego. I want to see those explosive Viego fights behind the Nautilus engage, try and get that shut down and snowball them. And I think the first pick fan uh, phase going pretty much as expected. Of course, a mismatch on the mid lane as they can now ban out on the side of BLG, but a mismatch on the jungle and see if that Viego is something that T1 want to target, what their priority is going to be there. It's a tough call. I honestly, I'm trying to figure out in my head what they want to go towards. They're going to ban the Kindred, so I think it will still be those jungle bans, but and maybe they ban towards the Nidalee as well, because we've seen an awful lot of the times the Nautilus and the Nidalee work in tandem, but um, it is going to be a tough one here. I think Shun definitely needs to start to figure out where he wants to go, I think going towards more of a tank could work out well and just try and put as many beefcakes in front of El because he's been having a fantastic series. If it is the tank, I would prefer the Poppy over the Sejuani even. True. Nidalee. Okay, a lot of respect given over to that pick. Again, we haven't yeah, seen it really, really thrive really on stage, really. I think, outside of one G2 game at the very start of plans. But still giving respect to those snowball picks for Shun. I think Faker, an excellent opportunity here if he wants to uh, go for the Ari Wukong. It is a very bad matchup into the Nautilus, but can still be a big playmaker. I do agree with uh, with Kobe, though. Actually, I think this is a fantastic poppy angle if you end up picking it up for Shun. Like, the amount of engage that you have that's dashes on the side of T1, the ability to peel then for Elk, it could be such a strong pickup here. But we'll have to see exactly what T1 are going to go for. I imagine they are going to go for something like a bit of a blind in the mid lane. I think Lysandre, well, the slander has gone, so it's a case of what do you actually feel comfortable taking for Faker here. And Ari, as you say, maybe, but there's not a huge amount of yeah, picks that we've seen from Faker over the course of this tournament. The Jack's actually going to be okay. what's picked up here. So, a bit of a blind. Wouldn't know the mid lane match, but instead just trying to give Faker as much information as possible where they decide exactly where they want to put that pick. And the Poppy looking even stronger with the Jack's locked in. I really hope that Faker is cooking up an amazing fifth pick, <laughs> counter pick right now. He Chris Chronicler. Chris Chronicler. Oh! oh. He is that Fiora. Bid is that Fiora. <laughs> All right, Zay, is the Jackson to Fiora matchup the top lane carry matchup of the current meta? And I think because this is an incredibly confident pick because at the end of the day, whenever you play Fiora, you kind of make the game about yourself. And this Want tournament it. has not been about top laners. All right, so I want the Poppy, but really, I'm very curious about Faker. There's been so much theory crafting since this Nautilus emerged about 
individual lane champions that you can play, other melee champions in mid lane into that Nautilus. So come on, Faker. Come on, give me something spicy. Come on. What's it going to be? Mordekaiser, Allowy. Allow <laughs> There's no way. Ah. There's no way. Okay. Okay, the safe pick, the Ari. Not a great matchup because it's hard to bully the Nautilus out, but still a lot of playmaking. Exactly. A lot of playmaking. There's a reason Ari is so, so popular right now on this patch. So much playmaking. You have that pick potential. You can you can go for Kha'Zix kills. You can jump in towards this area as well. But it looks like, at least for T1, play through strongly jungle. Try and lean into that bot side. Play for Gumi, you should carry it. But when I look towards BLG, as you rightly called out, Dracos, this Fiora, Bin has been outstanding on it for years. The only pentakill in finals, or world finals, was for Bin on this Fiora. And he's going to have to see now if he can have a similar performance. Definitely with the matchup, he can have a good time. But it's very much a skill matchup. And as we pointed out at the start of the day, over the course of Bin versus Zayas, Zayas has been the one that's been able to come in on top when it comes to go difference, when it comes to CS. So this has been really tro throwing down that challenge, saying, I know I've grown, I know I can beat Zayas, and I know that I can push us to that finals against JDG. And it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself in a match point situation, because win or lose, it feels like this game is on bin. You could have gone for Poppy, you could have gone for something safer on the top side of the map and played around Elk, played around the setup that you have from Yigao instead, putting that faith into yourself, putting your faith into the counter pick on top side. 2-1, currently the score for BLG. T1 going to look to bring us to a game five here, but we'll have to see how the Fiora works out for Bin. It's going to be all eyes on the top side of the map. What a way to do it. What a way to bring us in towards this game four. I am so excited to see this. It's a matchup that we've seen time and time again in the LPL. Bin is going to be very familiar with this. We'll have to see what Zayas can do to fight back. Must win games for T1. If they want to keep their finals appearance streak alive, must win games. Faker on the Ari. Zeus taking the carry match up topside. The Counter Strike repost mind game. And comfort on both sides. Yagel on this Nautilus has been one of the big picks for him. Elkin on, on the Zeri Lulu. Bean on his Fiora, Shun on a carry, but on the opposite side, we're back to the Zyra Khan that dominated that bot lane for T1. Faker and owner on this strong mid jungle and Zayas on Akari. This is where both squads want to draw the line and show that they deserve to go up against JDG tomorrow. Copper box erupting with cheers for T1. A lot of pressure again. You can't afford to look ahead. You can't afford to think about JDG and how close you're winning to that winning that five game series. Have to stay focused on the opponent ahead of you. And you can feel the tension here even as the TSM chants rain through the venue. Of course, of course. Why not? A little tension release, you know? Build it up, release it. Shout out to the audience. Master Craftsman. And we're going to get a wolf start here for Shun. Topside Kha'Zix. Leashing them all the way over around. All right. Again, keeping our eyes on the jungler should be uh, impactful in the early game, especially around mid lane. We have so much set up. Bot lane as well for the side of T1 with this Rakan. We saw Karia and Guma together from Fog of War finding knockup after knockup onto On once he had burned that flash. With both junglers starting on opposite sides, we'll have to see exactly where they're going to be going. Wukong moving up towards that top side. Definitely gives an opportunity for him to try and play in towards Zayas and Bane in this top side matchup. A huge amount of this matchup is the mind games. When does Zayas pop the counter strike? When do you answer with the repost? Can you time it out? And right now, Zayas just starting to push forward using the fact he's got the level advantage and that counter strike at level one. And because of that top side start for Kha'Zix, oh, actually, we're going to have a wrap around here. Shun coming for the level three pass through mid to get to his bottom side. See if they can get any sums out of Faker. Double three for you, Gal. Jumping in, Faker's gonna flash 50. Big hook, anticipating the flash, but will not find it. Patience from Faker, nerves of steel in the moment. Yeah, Gal goes for the flash predict, and Faker makes him look silly by holding it. Does not panic, holds his sums. And that's huge. If Faker's able to hold on to that flash and now you go, doesn't it make that play making so little opportunities there in that mid lane? Plus the fact owner can even try and take, make a visit into the mid lane as Faker starts to chip down Yago. We'll probably need to push in and reset though with how low he is at the moment. Now on the top side again, checking in, waiting again for that mind game, but keeping our eyes on the jungler, especially as owner completes his first clear on the top side of the map. Difficult to force a dive on a bin at this stage of the game, but may look to just create another pressure advantage in the top lane. 
Yep, owner finishing on that top side. Zeus backing off a little bit. Bin has to know, though. His jungler's been seen on bottom side. He's at a jungle pressure deficit. Walking up to the waiting arms of owner, the leap in. The counter strike, the parry coming out. Stun will not connect. Ooh. Trying to make use of his bone plate and harassing here on the way out. As a top laner, trying to exchange damage on jungle. Area fishing for the knockup, sidestep by Elk. Elk keeping the trade going. Shun on the bottom side of the map, now looking to set up for a potential dive. The snare gonna catch them on the back side of the trade. Another wave, pretty far away, but BLG gonna look to keep the pressure on. Guma, no ghost. Yeah, guy was pushing the mid lane, but you can see owner's trying to get the gank off to stop him from shoving this in. Split action. Buffer on the charm means he got makes it out to safety for a brief moment. He has no flash from the previous play. Titan's Wrath keeping him healthy for now. Aftershock coming in his clutch with a dive on the bottom side. What's the response from BLG? It's first blood for T1 in the mid lane. BLG, how will they fire back? Top side of the map though. Bin and Zeus trading back and forth. A dive on the bottom side. That's one. Now looking for a second. BLG have on tanking. They're able to walk away. Carry is still standing, but Guma taken down. They want more, they're not done yet. Carry a flash. Carry a flashing a safety, that's the Ignite. Now ticking, they're able to make it out. On still standing, they're on the retreat. Owner not there in time. Owner and Faker stopped walking down to the bot lane. They weren't there in time on BLG. As soon as they saw Faker reappear on mid, they were like, fantastic, we can go for the second one, but on! Waiting in the darkness, on with the shield! Getting the flash out from Owner, just barely able to walk away. Still huge, huge stuff there for BLG to be able to get those kills on bottom lane. Bottom lane, we know this is where your money is made. This is where your team fights are made. Getting that focus money onto the Zeri. Look at the CS afterwards that they have to drop for this. I mean, the fact you get that polymorph immediately means Guma Yushi can't do a thing on tanking it up. And you can see here, look at where the roam is from T1. They start to stop and reset, yeah. and that's why they're not here in the bottom lane as BLG decide to continue the dive. Yeah, they, they know. They, they decide it's too late. The kill's already been had on the AD carry, but BLG stick around with the extra minion, get, they get the second kill as well, and then even though Flash is forced on on, they don't give any money back critically on the bottom side of the map. Small window of opportunity though is that none of the kills went on to Elk. One onto Kha'Zix, one onto On means that at least it's not as disastrous for T1, but with Cole in pocket and the fact that Elk has that lead, he's still in a fantastic spot. And ultimately, it was On's flash being down in the previous game that gave Karia and Guma so many opportunities to find those 2v2 kills without the help of a jungler. Maybe can look to do the same here. Elk and On playing with a lot of respect, backing off on the bottom side has been, and Zayas trading blows been a small XP advantage. Keep our eye on that matchup as more items come through. Very close in the gold overall, but 400 for Elk on the bottom side. All right, I'm gonna look at owner here, the Wukong. Needs to get his level six. Wukong level six, possibility of turning that play around. River being taken over by BLG though. The dragon should be theirs. They got that mid push. Yagao moves into the uh, river himself. Shun's already here. And bottom lane rotates up. Mid pressure into bottom pressure. Dragon secured for BLG. And the fact that now you manage to secure this in six and a half minutes means that you can start to get control over bot side and still look to rotate Elkanon up towards that Rift Herald. That's been the story of BLG. Pretty much every single Rift Herald this series get their AD carry there, try and leverage that into some kills for Elk. We'll have to see if it can work out again for them here in game four. Yep. AD carries are kings. They rule the game. The dragons are down there. Start your stacking early. Get your rotations up towards that seven and a half minute mark. Guma taking a lot of damage there in the exchange. Carry now gonna try to fire back. Guma waiting on the feather, feather pullback. Oh, playing on the edge there, but Shun now repeating. He's on the bottom side with blue buff, it's big. No. Level six not there for Guma. Ooh. Control wards here for BLG, Shun slips in, hello! Ultrashock laser, carry, and now Polymorph immediately they're gonna go for one, and instantly Shun flashes out to safety, the TP burn to no effect. Zayas now needs to try and get something back. Faker on the way down, Shun just needs to sneak away, but I don't think there's an angle here. Ari leaping in, the shutdown for Faker, big to respond from the kill on the bottom side. The fact you had that TP from Zayas meant you had to get something. Bane has managed to freeze this in the top wave, so he's gonna get a fairly uh, nice bit of CS for himself, get himself back into this matchup as well, as Zayas had managed to get some CS and an experience lead for himself from there. Yep, now look at the map. You're gonna be forced with this freeze on top side, big Fiora getting here, and then jungle gonna rotate over for the spawn of this Rift Herald. There's existing Scuttle Crab vision and control ward here for T1. But the bottom lane focus for BLG again. Shun jumps in, assassination complete, flashes out. Not able to get any sort of stop, of <laughs> course, for Fiora, but a little bit of damage. Yes, a little you bit know, of We post. want to send him over there with some damage and see if your team can make anything happen. And obviously a pretty simple kill there for Faker, but good that they are able to get that one back. 
and I'm loving the camera work. Shout out to the shout out to the audience, the camera guys. We're getting a lot of great expressions in this one. D1 though, they let Bin have that minion wave at his tower, and they try and get this Rift out. It takes so long to take down. Three thousand health, one more eyeball pop. T1, a lot of good team fighting tools. Ultimate up and available for owner. Not sure if BLG want to contest this. It looks like they will just give it away. T1 using brute force to secure that herald. Now yeah, waiting in the darkness, fishing for an angle. Actually very big for some recovery there for T1. To be able to get that on reset, as BLG did send support over as well. But with that big minion wave being pushed out by Bin, not going to be able to have anything happen. Elk going all in on the bottom side. Still level 5 for Guma, level 7 for Bin. Or Elk, excuse me. Can he get 6? Can he get 6? Guma racing to 6 as fast as he can. Oh. The tower shot! Elk playing on the edge. Carry on the way down. Ultra Shock Laser not going to connect on the tower. On coming in as well. Oh, that was very, very close. I think trying to set up for On, who would actually manage to wrap around behind the tower to see if they could get it, but he was matched by Carry, so On not really in the position to get onto Guma Yushi underneath that tower. But Elk very far ahead in this bot lane matchup and showing us. Just not able to get the kill, but a near 30 CS lead, plus you got that Cole about to come through. Elk is once more being set up for success by BLG. Oh man, you can say that. 3,900 to 2,800. This early in the game, a thousand gold lead is massive. And the coal hasn't even come through yet. It's not even fully stacked. And, and Guma doesn't even have one to respond. This is going to be a massive gold difference as we get into more and more of these mid-game skirmishes. Uh, I mean, it's the entire gold difference of the teams right now. Plus, they got the dragon off their bottom lane pressure. So he's getting aggressive on the top side. Been continuing to win on these trades. I was about to say, you could all in as Bin. You have to be very careful here, Isaiah. Bin, yeah, that was it. You see, trying out. to get the slow. So we could go for that all in, but... Not able to do so, but Ben will just, or sorry, Zayas will just respect it and will back away. No mana left for Ben. Zayas is going to take the chance to reset here, get another item under his belt. Top lane tense, but a small lead for Ben as of the moment. Partially because of the roam down from Zayas early on with the TP. Will not have access for that to come back to the lane. And is just going to try to go for the all in here, but this is very risky. Counter Strike coming out. Zayas going to find the stun, but there's a mark on the side here. Zayas now trying to full commit. Bin now leaping out to safety. Zayas, does he have the angle? He's going to go in, but it's going to be the one for one on the top side. The one for one. Bin managing to get the kill, but Zayas, nicely done. Spots that there's very little mana on Bin. Doesn't have enough for the repost. So Zayas decides to go for the all in. Will get the kill. Should be able to get back towards the lane. Or sorry, the wave that's in that top side as well. So nice job there from Zayas. Yeah, minion wave gonna bounce back. Both flashes used by the top laners and the draw. They're just gonna have owner push that bouncing wave back out actually. Since uh, Bin does have teleport, Bin will be able to go catch. Oh, coming in the charm, gonna connect Faker. Not enough damage to work through that Lulu shield at this stage of the game. It's Caria not gonna get caught out as he pushes down a little bit of vision. Cleared out immediately by Shun though, courtesy of the sweeper. So they know, they're making the call. Bin teleports topside, catch that wave as Dragon spawns. Top laners will be up there on their islands. But because Owner went up there, he's not in a position to get this Rift Herald down as Dragon spawns, so a bit of a missed opportunity now. T1 not running the position to follow up. Faker looking for the reset to TP back in, so BLG will manage to get the Dragon before Owner gets in position with the Rift Herald. Yeah, Faker had full Everfrost there, so he wanted to get his purchase off. Now he's coming out pretty big. Shun, waiting over the wall. Still a very tanky Nautilus. The Aftershock will fade away shortly, and they're going to try to burn him down before Shun can get into the fight. Yagao walking for now on, coming in. The shield is huge. Yagao still standing. He'll be able to make it out. On is there to save the day. Flash Lulu ultimate. Elk versus Faker immediately going to ult his charm. Just locked up. Back half coming through. Faker needs to rush out. Spear Rush is coming out just in time. Elk still fishing for the 1v1. Trading blows back and forth as the bot lane tower is now set to fall. Faker versus Elk. Will finally fade away as Faker walks off. Not gonna look for the all-in, but T1 still get what they came for. Bot lane tower with that Rift Herald charge was all the thing he wanted. Get some of that gold back into Guma Yushi. Still though, about a 900 gold lead for Elk off the back of that, but it's desperately needed so he can finish his Gale Force and get into a position where maybe he can contest some of these fights. Yeah, Mythic should be completed for both of them. As Elk goes back, there we go. We get the shield bow as well. That extra big, big shield for safety. And even though they don't get the kill on the Yagao, as you said, the bottom side objective taken. Zayas waiting in the darkness. He's been backing off, knows that he can now approach the way of Zayas. He's going to stick around here, trading back and forth. Ben will try to call the bluff on the counter strike. So Zayas is going to retreat as Jun fishing for Caria here in the enemy jungle. Will use the ultimate there. 
So back away, but VLG, seeing if they can get control over this top side. And this is again just to see if they can allow now Bin with the Sheen completed to just constantly trade against Zayas, even just pushing him back. You can see half health now on that top side for Zayas, and with that many members of VLG in the area, T1 needs back. Going in, Shun. Gonna poke onto Carry, just trying to stop Carry from laying down any of this vision, trying to choke them out with the power of the Umbral Glaive. Big jungle power spikes here. Owner gets his Divine as well as that coveted, very big lethality spike for Shun. And Owner's ultimate comes back up three seconds here. Wants to try and combine off of a Faker play. Running down mid, teleport used for Yuga to stop the minion wave. Support Elk trying to clear it out. The Ari plus the Wukong have so much playmaking ability on these spikes though, on their single items. With their ultimates available, that is a deadly duo. ELG committing Yagao's teleport to mid because they really want to try and contest for this Rift Herald. Get mid prio, get their vision down. Even being with the quick reset and now the Divine Thunder coming back. Zayas has his own though. Can TP into this top side, but knows that a lot of it belongs to BLG. But maybe oh. owner doesn't. Trent waiting in the darkness. Ooh, heads up use of the sweeper there to spot out the Kha'Zix waiting for him. You're not coming to fight. You talked about it. Mid game playmaking. Name of the game with an Ari Wukong duo. Elk has to be careful here. Gao can get the fight kicked off. Baker ready to come over the wall. And immediately, Carry has just taken down, and Elk wants to keep this fight going. Slow from the Ultra Stock Laser will connect. That's the ulti proc, and Guma just has to run for the hills. Lucky he's able to find the Gale Force in time to make it out of that one, but Faker now locked up. Faker, the ultimate, has to be used to try to take him out to safety. The charm connecting, but onto Yagao, and it is Elk on the backside, still fishing. They will walk away. Harold for BLG. Oh, Caria, he's deleted. Wait, they want more? Going in. Guma has to be careful here. Elk now flashing out to safety. That's the feathers. Guma's going to be vulnerable. Shun still taking the Herald, still uncontested, but T1 trying to get Pryo in the mid lane. Harrier's alive and walking back from that low death timer. 4k health on that Rift Herald though, one more eyeball pop. All right, tread through it. T1, I don't think there's an angle here, really. Herald taken by BLG. T1 maybe gonna try to leverage their advantage to get some damage down in mid lane. So let's be so careful though, yeah, go. Starting to step forward, kind of the hook. Shun in the back line as well, putting I'm pressure. Connecting. So T1 will just step back. They don't want to put themselves too far forward and have BLG look for the engage. They don't have the Zai ult, they don't have the Ari ult, they don't have the Wukong ult. Good that they're able to push that wave in, but that could have been disastrous if BLG had tried to engage in that moment. Luckily for them, Yagao also does not have the ult available. No re-engage opportunity for BLG. Time and time again, early move into the river for the vision control. We saw it when Yagao was on the Annie. Even without Flash, he had positioning. They get the chunk onto the member of T1 that's coming to get Vision to buy entry, even up to the objective. BLG do it again. They're there first. Off of that Fog of War, boom. They get the hook. Carry is dead before his body even hits the floor. And they get the objective win. Rift Herald number two now in the hands of Shun. Was well, a little bit dicey though. I mean, Elk trying to go over the wall, gets caught out, has to burn his flash, has to burn his ghost. So with that dragon now in 20 seconds, what could have been a very big win for BLG, where Elk can play very aggressive in the fight, now doesn't have as much of an opportunity. So going to be way more reliant on On to make sure that he can keep him safe. Because when you look at the team fights we've seen from Elk, where he really gets to pop off, it's been a beefy front lines, people who can try and support him in multiple ways, but it's just not quite the case with this. Yago is your front line, and you do have on, but apart from that, you're kind of on your own. Look at these wards for BLG. They push mid wave, they slather the river with control wards for themselves. Again, great positioning. They pop the Herald. Yagao's fishing around for hooks on the corner. Looking for an angle in. Second Herald just gonna get the charge in the mid lane tower. Won't break it, but we'll get some good damage down and secure mid priority so they can move into the river. So much work being done by the Umbral Glaive here as Shun is just able to effortlessly clear vision. Both sides of mid lane awarded up by BLG. T1 though, they're trying to get control of the min minion wave first. So they can shove that in. Wait, Shun actually starting up Dragon while in darkness. Owner. They can sniff this one out, but they don't have perfect information. Elk still clearing the mid lane. T1 with an angle into the fight. Able to group his five, but Yagao waiting in the river. Yagao, is he just going to throw down the ultimate by a bit more time? 3k on the dragon, getting lower and lower. T1, will they be able to claim their prize? Owner, can he do it one more time? Luke can move into the pit, but no! This time around, Shun takes the objective, but now the fight breaking out as Owner looks to get things kicked off. Faker leaping into follow-up, but there's not an angle here. They're just going to back away. Oh, Shun, nerves of steel there. He pops the invisibility, stays around for the Q smite. He gets one back. Then parry, use Faker fishing for the charm, but will not connect. Yagao going in with the hook as well, but he gets caught out the counter strike now to follow. Carrier going for the knockout, but it's not going to connect. BLG and T1 testing the waters, fishing for these angles of attack with BLG coming out ahead. That, these that these fights are so tense. That hook, that hook from Yagao, if it hit, could have been devastating for T1, but Faker flashes forward, Elk. 
just gets behind the minion in time, and now BLG are stepping forward. TP into the mid lane, they've got the wave behind them. They want to break open this mid lane tier one, and they'll do so effortlessly. No objective for them on the bottom side, but the tier one tower, but they're still moving there. Owner retreating now back to the safety of his own jungle. Wow. Sticking around there, Shun committing to that dragon, while T1 tentatively pushing their way into the river and coming over, but he sticks around, he critically gets it. It keeps you on such an early timer for that arrival of the soul for BLG. So even though they have a very small gold lead over T1, the dragon advantage is enormous. And if they keep getting in there first to set up the vision first with their Umbo Glaive, with their control wards, it just makes it so risky for T1. And we look at a potential future where BLG has an infernal soul. Karia can never go alone to set a vision again without a sweeper to check the brushes ahead of time. Kha'Zix will one-shot him every single time. This game is only getting more difficult for T1. It's a small gold lead, but that is the dragon stacking, the mid lane control they have by taking down the turret, certainly making this game feel pretty favorable for BLG at this stage. And I think a huge amount of that is still coming down to the AD carries, even though we're seeing the Fiora on the top side. We were hyped for this Jax versus Fiora matchup. It really has come down to Elk once more. Bin, though, will manage to dodge away. But when it comes to the positioning that Elk has had in the fight, the ability for him to just get damage off, it has been in a significantly better scenario. Now BLG looking to leverage that once more as he starts to move in towards mid. But Bin in trouble. Bin backing away. Baker knows that he's not on vision, but Bin's still giving the respect anyway. We'll just back off here and see Zaya step forward on the top side. Yagao going to take some time if he wants to kill that tower. Take a bit of time, but just going to get the TP out from Baker. Excellent side landing from Ben from BLG there. As their team is trying to commit resources to top side, he knows the only possibility for the T1 play to blow it open would be there. He does not give them the opening and hence allows BLG control what's behind Baron now once again. Setting up through the river. Again, what a slower pace of game from BLG. It's been insane to see a team that was all about fist fighting. I mean, even Emily, I think, on the desk was saying, like, champion kills per minute when you face a team like BLG skyrockets. But that's not what we're getting here. A much slower pace from this squad, making sure that they're actually in a position to take clever fights, set Elf up, have Yagao as that front line, and they're not overstepping anywhere near as much as you would have seen from them domestically. And game one was kind of the game we expected. Absolute bloodbath. Game three, very T1 favored. Games two and game four have been slow and controlled from both sides. Neither side looking to overstep or risk anything. BLG pushing in, clearing out vision. Carry waiting in the darkness. Has to be careful here. Infernal Rift making it that much easier for BLG to walk into enemy territory. Hook gonna land. He down now backing away. Baron has to be on the mind of both sides as we're 21 minutes into the game, but it's a minute and a half till the objective. They're just trying to take some summoners off of Zeus, but to no effect. That's a pretty big chunk with the health bar, and considering Zeus gave up 30 seconds by leaving minion wave bottom side, now you'll see Bin take control. Bin on Fiora with the opening on bottom side. Guess what? Tower goes poof. Right through that one. Again, more gold in the back pocket of BLG, more pressure on the map. Something that's going to have to be responded to by T1. A minute until Infernal Dragon. Sole point for the side of BLG. T1 have to fight this. Oh. Oh, okay, all the, right. The control, the confidence from this team. All tournament long. BLG spamming emotes in your face, predicting three zeros. Absolute confidence. They haven't gone wrong yet. And now we'll have to see if the bin script is for real. It feels like this dragon is going to make or break this game. If T1 can secure it, if T1 can find that space, that breathing room to get their carries into a position, they will be in a good spot. But for BLG now, setting up in the mid lane, no control over bot side for a bin. Makes it easier for Zayas to join these fights. So BLG are forcing mid onto Kuma. Fernando onto Kuma, looking for the knock of the feathers fly again. Not going to walk away, happy to have the cool but immediately hooks three engages and that is the power of the Kha'Zix. Kuma now isolated, Faker running. And it should just be the objective to the side of BLG. They have secured themselves the soul. T1, will they be willing to fight a man down? Guma doesn't burn the flash. He doesn't want to get away from it. So BLG now in a position. T1, what can you do? Owner, can you make the hero play again? Hook on to Zayas. Slow and controlled. 4K getting lower and lower. Owner needs to find a way into the pit, but he's going to run away. It's Infernal Soul. It's match point for BLG. T1 in dire straits. BLG are running towards Baron. They want to try and get that vision control down as well. They know the T1 have to back away. They certainly should. They've got already the map blacked out. 
my goodness, Yigao, he calls his shot ahead of time, top lane, flashes the emote. Shun, slowing Guma in mid lane is all they need to get in range. And Guma still won't have his ultimate. Okay, they're just gonna clear it out. See where Zeus and Faker were. They wanted to try and push in onto the tier two, but if they showed on that, BLG immediately could have started the Baron. So T1 forced the reset. BLG don't realize how much space they had there to actually try and make something happen. Zeus, he's going to stick around though and look for the tier two. And regardless, Bin is going to sneak away another turret here. Goes up top side, finishes that one off. More solo tower gold for the Fiora. Ravenous coming in. More sustain. The more pressure, you're able to just instantly clear a lot of those waves with the Fiora bin, only getting stronger on the side lane. Ooh. Has been a big power point thus far, even if we haven't really seen it come to fruition in some of the fights. And BLG, with an Infernal Soul backing them up, are just so favored in the 5v5. And it's such a good power spike for your side lane. Once your Fiora gets the Ravenous, those minion waves do not stall you at all. He can annihilate them. So BLG, they've got the all of the upper hand right now with the soul, with the vision over the objective first and the priority for the side lane to quickly shove. Yeah, you see it here. Ults from Yago is dodged by Guma Yushi, but at this stage, <laughs> <laughs> not in the best spot. Doesn't have, manage to flash away. Yago manages to get the hook and with that, BLG secure themselves <laughs> a soul. I'm sorry, I'm still laughing at the camera angle. You're probably wondering how I got here. Exactly. <laughs> Well, scratch. <laughs> it, it was really well played from the BLG members, though. You know, Shun hits the slow, and then they both move to the side yep. to avoid the ultimate feathers coming down. Yagao knows. Easy trade here. My ult for your ult, and I hit you with the hook. And see now what T1 can do. Really hard for them to control vision again. Umbral Glaive is down, but now the Sweeper is up. It is absolute control of the vision on the top side for BLG, and Shun now just leaping in. Massive damage, just taking a chunk out of Zeus. Disgusting damage <laughs> from this Kha'Zix here. And nothing that Zayas can do except take it and back off. Now he's going to try. Rinse and repeat, counter strike up again, but that's just more and more of his health taken away. Two members on the top side, T1's either opportunity to engage in the mid lane. They find Elk, and that could be everything to bring them back against the Infernal Soul. They still find the fight, but Bin is now here. Bin looking to pop off. He's going to take out Guma. BLG keeping this one going. They have the Infernal Soul. Faker now running the blast cone, taking him out to safety. The TP coming out, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. The auto, the staggering blows, and BLG still take the fight. How could you forget about Bin? Bin TPing in on the Fiora, gets onto Guma Yushi. BLG turn towards the Baron. Owner over the side, though. Owner, do you have one more left in you? All of T1 praying to Owner right now. No flash, but he's got a smite. 5k. Copper Box waiting, holding their breath. BLG looking for an angle to deny the jungler into the pit, but a lot of members out now might even give him a better avenue. The stun now coming in. They're looking to keep the fight going. They're looking to take Bin out. Shun waiting over the wall. The Baron has been stopped. Can they take the fight? Zeus now going in on the Shun, leaping back right over the wall. The shutdown is huge on the Bin, and BLG might have just thrown everything away. Absolute Get patience in, in the face of disaster. The flip of a coin could just decide it all, and it comes up heads for BLG. So what? Elk from out of nowhere to the fight make sure the play sticks. The raging ball from out of the trees comes over the wall. T1, we're trying to chase down BLG. Really punish them for taking that Baron. But just about, Elk is able to get into the position to take them down. Our producer owner used his W in the fight, so he didn't have W to get over for the smite fight at the end. And that's why BLG make the call to finish. Even after losing members over the side of the wall here, is the origins though. You talked about it, Dagda, the teleport in from the top laner. Bin comes in, they find Faker, you're teleporting in the alcove, your Gao don't care, hits him with the auto, you're down. And this is where it gets crazy. T1, three members over the side. They're just trying to buy time. And and only two members of BLG over here. Zeus flashed into the pit with his counter strike on to force them out. And then yeah, with this smite fight, he's stuck on the outside. The cooldown's still too long. Shun and On made the call. Since they saw him use his W in the skirmish behind the Baron, they know he can't get in the pit. Smite tracking. They had confidence. They burned the Baron down, even though they're low health. Baron buff backing him up. Owner looking for a flank. The window's opportunity. Smaller and smaller for T1 as BLG continue to build a massive lead. Elk this time protected by the team, ready to usher this wave forward. Picking up extra kills in the back of that fight. Owner spotted. Crucial for Bin. On the bottom side, a massive point of pressure that demands an answer from the side of T1, but Shun is there to back him up. Ready to shadow him, ready to go all in if they need to to find these picks. 
T1, it is now do or die. A single mistake with a Baron buffed up enemy team will cost you the game, will cost you the series, the tournament. They have not missed a final with this lineup, but this very well could be their first. And BLG want to make it being the last defending MSI champion, wanting to make sure he gets back to the finals, pushing into the bot side, spreading T1 thin. Elk taking a couple of pop shots at the turrets, but right now, not quite able to get in. T1 have decent wave control. They should be able to clear these out. BLG, I don't think they can tr quite crack the base here. They need just a little bit more. They don't quite have the range or the safety. The lead is big, but not enough to just start diving towers. Been trying to act as that pressure point, but he doesn't have the Baron buff. Crucially, was taken out in the fight, so can't just solo push those towers. Baker now immediately pushing for the engagement. Yeah. Elkin again! They find him, he goes golden. It's a brief moment that he buys for himself and his team's hope, but the feathers come back, and Faker will find Elk. Yagao in the midst of the waiting arms of T1. They will gladly grab another kill. This is their chance. This is their opportunity. They need to tear through BLG. Faker saw the angle. He takes the chance. They get the kill. Look at the beat. They're trying to move in. Elder, Elder, Elder. Elder. Let's put it. Every decision is life or death now at this stage of the game. If they can burn through Elder, they've got a combat buff that will last them into the next fight, but it's Shun in the jungle. Can he be the one to steal it away? Owner has taken so many for him, just threatening, buying time for Bin. But Bin has a match from Zeus. He can't just simply end the game. He'll at least grab an inhibitor. Elder could be everything. Shun, uncontested for now, ready to go in. It's getting lower and lower. He's going to leap into the pit, but this time, Owner comes out on top. With all of Korea watching, Owner hits that smite. They get the Elder Dragon. The hope for T1 alive. The base was cracked by Bin, but T1 come out with such a huge buff. Two minutes now. We have to see how much they can try and get done. There's so much standing gold on the map. Bounties as well for T1, and it starts with this flash. Faker sees the angle, flashes in onto Elk. They get the stopwatch. They immediately kill him. As soon as he comes out, everyone collapsing. You see, Shun was clearing wards in the jungle, trying to rotate over. It's just too late. I believe, actually, when we get back to live, oh, we have a okay. pause. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! All right, we'll keep you updated as we have more information on the pause. In the meantime, uh, take a breath. Remember oh. that you have the whole seat, not just the edge of your seat. <laughs> well, we have a litany of replays to go over. If we just look at any of the 10,000 smite fights that we've seen in this Oh. In this series, throughout this tournament, there's so much exciting play between these teams. And they're still delivering here. Man, the call there. You know what? Fine. Let Kha'Zix ult in. See if we can get it. Oh. It's definitely uh, it's based drink. on the context. I think in the heat of the moment, an arm might have flown left when it was supposed to go right. A drink was knocked over. You reset. <laughs> and it's almost a nice bit of comedic relief in one of the most tense games and one of the most tense series. Just take a breath. Everyone on stage, still a person, still having a good time, still just playing. Ooh. This is, I mean, as you say, this is on the edge of the seat. This can go either direction. The fact that you have Faker flashing forward to get that charm onto Elk, Elk just not having that opportunity to respond. And it all come, come down to those little moments. Now with T1 with this Elder Dragon, we have to see just how much they can get done. He's just like me for real, knocking stuff over on his computer. <laughs> I thought you meant Faker's flash. I was like, <laughs> all right, no, Kobe. No, <laughs> no, but big <laughs> yeah, Oh, all those moments that you, you flashed <laughs> in the world. The, yeah. the part where he knocks over his drink. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, here we are. Elder Buff still there for T1. A window where they've got more power than the Infernal Drake on the opposite side. Let's see what they can do with it. Oh, oh my. Okay. Elder Dragon. So much possibility with this. Because you can force so much here by T1, actually, top side's really heavily pushing against them, and they had Zayus on bottom side, so kind of hard to go overreach and get that objective bounty that you need to get right back into this game. Done. I think a lot of this is going to be a case of like trying to get this mid tower, now moving Zayus top to get that top outer turret, just get that goal that's easily available, and try and close the distance here. Yeah, that thing uh, doesn't last forever. Let's see if they can get some objective bounties out of it, though. They keep the pressure up here. You can try and poke down. Zeus now going to have to do one more minion wave topside. Blast cone taken before On got there. How he, strong is Shun right now? He could have, if he waited for On to come with him on the Blast cone. Isolating the Kha'Zix, Zeus not going to follow, forcing Shun away. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, T1 getting right. aggressive, taking the objective bounty, getting the gold that much closer to even. 1.5k at this stage of the game is not meaningful. 
Look at the Fjord in the bot lane though. Essentially BLG are like, look, you can take mid, you can take top outer, but if you try to threaten for any more, you're not going to be in a good spot. Faker now has to reset to make sure he can deal with the super creeps that are going to be coming into that lane. So T1, they will get a little bit, but they're not going to get much more than this. And I think that that's the goal. That was the margin right there. You want to try and get your two objective bounty shutdowns with that Elder Dragon. Like you said, don't overreach. Don't give up any more picks. They also funnel the solo gold into Zayus. Owner just hovers around for support if anyone tries to pick him. Gives him that vision, gives him that confidence to get it. And again, we're in a situation where a single team fight is very likely to decide the game. Of course, you can see a lot of the luxury items, I think as you call them, Kobe, the stopwatches coming out, the GAs as well. Potentially one final fight to decide it. The Baron one second away, BLG with control, with mid lane priority. Looking to take as much vision as they can away from the side of T1 already. The fight getting kicked off. Akaria is there to body block, but will cost He's him his life. One man advantage to the side of BLG. Yeah, Gao can do it too. He strikes on the Nautilus. No ult for the Nautilus, but T1, they're going to get desperate now. Owner on a control ward. But they can't defend this if they just give it. You send Fiora to the bot side. She can get that lane in, but they're not going to commit to Zayas. BLG off that pick. They're going to get the Baron. And just once more, BLG getting control of this game. Now, what can they do with this buff? Can they close it out? Can T1 find another angle, another pick, another way to shut down Elk and take him out of the fight? This time around, there's a GA, so they'll have to do it twice. Bin that top side pressure point. Zayo's doing everything he can on the bottom side to make sure that wave is pushed out. Mikau will look to respond. Bin alone for now on the top side. Can't afford to overstep too much. Should just take this tier two and back away. 600 gold in his back pocket. This is exactly what Bin needs to do, just create this pressure in the side lane. Elk now stepping up once more. We saw Faker make the hero play, has that flash once more. Carry it, has flash on the side as well, sitting on that pink board. Elk needs to be so careful, doesn't have the rest of his team yet, just trying to keep the pressure up. Trying to get any cooldowns they can out of Elk, and Mikhail's available on on as well, as you highlighted. Need to layer their CC perfectly if they just want to take the Zeri out. Both these mid laners taking turns, making flash pick plays for their teams. And now with the power of the Baron, they should be able. Shrelly is kicking the fight off. The stun immediately to go in. Elk just free firing. And again, he's just doing so much damage. Owner taking out before he can even ult. Bin now on the way in, but they pull back for now. It's just a tower. Slow, steady, controlled, taking an explosive engage, turning it into a small advantage. BLG will not overstep. That's two, two inhibitors down. BLG inside the base. They instantly go for the resets. Yagao was able to survive off his Zonias, plus the ultimate there from on. They take just one, they retreat. They still, though, they kind of get back out of the map. Maybe one more minion wave they can try and use this for, but getting another super creep wave in will give a lot of pressure towards BLG. Bin again just constantly threatening these side lanes. And now the opportunity to push in mid, lean towards that bot inhibitor, and with two inhibitors down, it feels like T1, their backs are definitely against the wall. Elimination game for T1, and time feels like it's ticking away. It certainly is, and even if you could find an angle in this game, there's still one more ahead of you. One minute at a time for T1, just trying to hold on to hope. Any angle, any opportunity. Flash up for Faker again. The charms have been clutch in the last few exchanges. But our BLG simply too far ahead. Will one pick be enough with the GA, with the stopwatches available on the opposite side? In on the top tower as this bot wave crashes. They've timed this beautifully. Massive and damage. Huge chunk coming in for the Ultra Shock laser. BLG breaking the inhibitor and just walking away again. They are not giving an inch to T1. They do not want to make any mistakes here. And they can easily do it with the poke here from the Kha'Zix. W Evolve. Constantly poking them off, constantly pushing them. They're just going to back away though. Elder Dragon is up. Vision has been set up. T1 have to try and come into this blind. Fiora in the bot side for Bin, pushing in that wave, making sure someone has to deal with that as T1. Elk on the forefront. Yagao hiding here. Who does he manage to get the hook on? Battle line's drawn. They have to send it. Both sides know what's in front of them. Steal or have the game stolen from you. Be ready to secure this objective. BLG slowly but surely burning through this one. T1 fishing, looking for an angle. But Bin. they're going for the wave. They're not going to go for the Elder. Are they going to keep it? No. They can just run into that bot side if they want to at times. T1 have to be so careful how they position here. Well highlighted, Dagda. They don't have the information that they need to make an educated decision. They don't have the vision. All that they know is that the Dragon has been aggroed and that someone on BLG is hitting it. 
It's just a piece of information they have to go for it. They have to find the gamble, they have to find the angle, the engage. Final moments for T1. Can they do it? Do they have what it takes? We'll send, here we go. Zeus has arrived. Shun taking a decent chunk. Kuma on the front line, immediately gonna get ulted. It's gonna force out the Feathers. The Feathers now coming down. Redemption on the backside to keep him healthy. Bid between Zeus and Faker, but he's doing just fine. Snare onto Yagao. Slow, controlled. Infernal Slow Polk starting to come in. Kha'Zix not gonna find purchase on the Void Spikes. Owner into the backside. Owner fishing for an angle. The immediate knock with the immediate fall, but Elk is still standing for now. Elk just does so much damage. T1 Please shot stop. their shot, but I don't think it's gonna be enough because at the end of the day, BLG are taking the fight. They are too damn strong. T1 getting torn through by the BLG lineup and the final fight of the series. This grip is strong. The 3 1 for BLG will remain as they will go for the finish. B the BLG take care of both LCK seeds. It was supposed to be EDG. It was supposed to be Gen G. It was supposed to be T1. But here at MSI, BLG stands strong in defiance of all expectations. They move to the final. The first time at an international event we will see an all LPL finals. <laughs> and you can see Tafe is ecstatic about that for BLG. The Tabe celebrations have been top notch. Ben calling his shots in his interview, even tweeted out 3 1. They will also take care of T1. And then. On top of that, if they do the 3-1, he said they will 3-2 JDG. And just an incredible performance, both in this series and across the tournament thus far for BLG. I think we cannot say it enough, the defiance of expectations. That went T1 lineup, the first time they will not make it to a finals, crushing overall. But BLG, again, the team that nobody expected, the team that seemingly came out of nowhere from a mediocre regular season, getting some upgrades, heading into the playoff, having more support behind the scenes, and turning it into an incredible run, one of the best runs we've seen in MSI in a very long time. And a reverse of what we saw at Worlds, where it was the LPL getting knocked out in the semifinals, not advancing to finals, and we got that all LCK. This time around, it's T1 being knocked out instead of JDG or BLG. And for the LCK, it's heartbreaking to see a team that was so dominant in the regular split, just not quite able to get to the, uh, themselves across the finish line. Amazing, amazing story for BLG. No longer the underdogs. Absolutely tearing through MSI. I mean, single-handedly eliminating how many teams? Both LCK seeds. Uh, a force to be reckoned with, and no matter how much we talk about their weaknesses, they always seem to find a way. That's the thing, I don't know who this team is. Like, you look at Benny, he's like, oh, he's always aggressive, he's super coin flip, dominating in his performances here. You look at the Jomong Madness, no longer here, it's a great elk in that bottom lane. And for BLG, being able to leverage these into team fights, leverage them into success, is absolutely outstanding. But now, one more hurdle lies in their way. But as we talk about that, T1 will take the stage. One final goodbye. London, Copper Box, give it up for T1 one more time. A valiant effort. And heartbreaking for the T1 fans, an organization with such incredible international pedigree. But again, just further showing us that BLG is a force to be reckoned with. It's so rare that we see an organization as unheard of on the international stage as BLG do something so great to find so many upsets or angles. Credit to their uh, their tenacity and the journey they've been on. They've played so many games to get to where they are now. And then making other teams pick carries on topside into bin, making them play their game. Yeah. Elk stepping up massive. Ooh, and I like I like that name Elk because that is your one plus player of the series. I think to the surprise of just about <laughs> no one. He can do the Jinx of Felios, he can do the Zeri. Uh, just feeling like an inevitability in so many of these fights. And as I said, it's been incredible to see the journey of this man. Going from someone who was so coin flipping on WE, to say people doubting he could ever step up to be a true carry for a team. And now to see him taking the team into an MSI Finals after being denied when he was back on WE in 2021, getting to his first international. 
you're getting to see the power of Elk at this MSI. And usually players who have weaknesses like that, they kind of fade away. You know, they're not, they lose some of that aggression. This man still gale forces forward more than 50% of the time. This is a guy who has played true to his style, but found ways to clean it up and just continues to get better and better on the international stage. Beautiful stuff from him. Team fighting, squeezing out extra little bits of damage all game long. Even not in the team fights that are highlighted so often, even in some of the standoffs towards mid, chunking people out previously, able to get these micro advantages for the team. And in a region that has people that were like Viper, Uzi, I mean, Deft over there at one stage, to now see this new roster of LPL talent starting to come up as well is absolutely incredible. Like, he is really making a name for himself, and I'm hoping that we get to see more of him to come. And I'm just hoping that you can slow down a little bit for the rest of the region, LPL. <laughs> God damn, it's impressive. Uh, anyway, that's enough from us. Let's hear from BLG's head coach, Tabe, in the Verizon post-game interview. Thank you so much, guys. Tabe, it's an honor having you on stage for this interview. Congrats on defeating Timon 3-1 today. Quick question, did you double check which side of the stage you were running to today? Uh, <laughs> yes, of course I've checked because right. yesterday uh, it was uh, uh, it is a very bad sports, sportsmanship because mm -hmm. I, I didn't really chant yesterday and I was so exciting because uh, it's my first time in my life I free all uh, LCK team. That's why I'm, just, yeah. Of course, an emotional moment and I think that throughout the entirety of MSI, getting the coach cameras backstage is something that all the fans have enjoyed because of how emotional you get when you look at your team's games. Um, how has it been so far watching the teams backstage and living the games so much? Um, you know, uh, when we first joined, uh, participate in MSI, our performance is not that good, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we always have some crazy mistakes, and I think no one in the world will think we can move to finals. But we are a team that we never give up. Uh, every time... <laughs> we, uh, we had a lot of conference, we had a lot of practice, and, you know, like, we, we don't want to go home, you know, yeah. You're definitely not going home. You will play the finals tomorrow. We'll talk about this a bit later in the interview. But I want to ask about you as a coach, because talking to Candice yesterday, she was mentioning the importance of you joining the team alongside Lumao. So I want to know more about what is your coaching philosophy and what makes you so good? And what is, how would you rate the impact you have coaching BLG? Um, I think I, I really did uh, a few things because I think BLG's other, we have many coach. We have like, we have, uh, we have four coach and one analyst. I think our coach team, including the analyst, is the best in LPL. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Lu Mao uh, gave me a lot of insights of how to be an experienced support and uh, many times even he didn't play uh, in the tournament right but he will keep on giving me new ideas and telling me how to comfort own and because he is a world-class support he always always will encourage me and also on to let us perform better and better throughout the whole tournament it's inspiring dedication and knowing more also about this blg team um, I want to have a bit of insights about the preparation coming into today and BLG, who keep on defying expectations here at MSI. Today we only have one tactic. We win bot lane, we win the game. Sounds about right. <laughs> we, we've talked about how, how proud you are about proving people wrong, staying in the competition, reaching the finals again. What does it mean to you to play finals at MSI tomorrow and rematch against JDG? I think this time, JDG will fear us. When I, see, when I see the fans being so hype and so happy to see you on stage, I have to let you talk to them. Is there anything you want to tell the fans today? Um, I really have to say thank you to the fans because at first, uh, I don't think we have so many fans, but throughout the tournament, 
even even when I'm ready to put on my headset, I hear really a lot of uh, cheers. You know, uh, people, uh, fans are came on saying BLG, BLG, and even after the BP go back, I, I heard I heard a lot of uh, cheers. Yeah. Lastly, I think this MSI Finals is LPL Finals. The first ever international LPL versus LPL Finals. Thank you so much for the interview and for being Thank on so stage much. with me today. Best of luck in the Grand Finals tomorrow. And that's all for us here. Shots back to you in Kola. Thank you so, so much. If there was any doubt in the world, LPL is the best region in the world right now. And we're gonna get an unbelievable final tomorrow, and it's not the final that maybe anyone thought we were going to get. But I am so, so happy for BLG Tabe, him just sprinting on stage, the ref going, no, you can't, but how can you keep yourself back in a moment like that, Emily? It is truly monumental what they are doing at MSI. I cannot believe this is the team that went up against JDG in their first series. Um, I mean, I think Tabe said it on here, right, in terms of like, what was our game plan? Okay, is Shun rotating to bot lane? Have they stacked a wave to push in? Because pretty much, like clockwork between levels three and four, Shun was there. He was getting Elk ahead, even when they completely punted topside, um, which is what really allowed Elk to absolutely pop off in every single game. They knew exactly what they wanted to do, and then they executed it. Just amazing poise from the team. I feel like they had really good early game strategies each game. Yeah. They dove bot lane four games in a row, two out of three games against Genji as well, really I think that was the key to taking out the LCK was their ability to shut down bot lane. And then even when Faker landed that clutch charm and you thought maybe it would be a miracle comeback, they played calm and cool enough to close the deal. Yeah, I will say, like, in, in a lot of these fights, when they are so close, even when BLG make mistakes, I do think their experience in LPL, because I know I've been, like, ragging on them a little bit, yeah. being like, I cannot believe this team is here. But I think, I do think a lot of that poise comes from just how much practice they do have in a lot of these situations in LPL. Like, I know for a fact they want that JDG series back, right? Like, they feel like it's completely on them and they take ownership of it. And then to show up today like this is phenomenal. Yeah, and I also think that obviously T1 was able to extend this game through, again, very reminiscent of game one, some smites from Owner, uh, some, some Miracle Charms from Faker. But by and large, they were always in control. They had a substantial gold lead. They stacked the dragons early, and the Infernal Soul really was a big factor in how one-sided a lot of the later fights were. So it was pure dominance from start to finish. It was, and uh, patience in the right moments. And um, it's Bin's world, and we are just living <laughs> in it. Let's pull up this tweet, because, you know, he said, we're going to 3-0 Genji. We're going to 3-1 T1. And then in the final, we're going to 3-2 JDG. And this was sent before they played Genji, by the way. Hey, I, I, I've got to be respect. This is I'm, crazy. On, I'm on board. After, <laughs> after I made the mistake last year of not believing in DRX, I'm like, no, no, okay, sure they've got to finals, but it's no. I think Bin's right. I think he's onto something. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about this because we drew the comparison at the beginning of the day. And let's be honest between all of us, we threw it out there on the off chance that BLG would do it today, right, mm -hmm. Chat? Yeah. And I mean, they keep doing it. Are we now tomorrow going to say, actually, we're going to give you a 50% chance, just like we do JDG, to win this series? <sighs> you you kind of have to, do? Do you but it, it's crazy. So the parallels between them and DRX are very real, right? Underdogs in basically every series they're in, and then pretty resounding victories. Uh, also, the last time they played JDG, even though they got 3-0, they were very close games before the team fights. I love this update from the graphic <laughs> we that go. we had earlier on in today the amount of times they have defied what people expect of them. But after today, after the interview, after the emotion, I think they're gonna be at least in London the crowd favorites. With the path they've made so far at MSI, it, it might actually change the dynamic a little bit. It's crazy. Uh, and Emily, you mentioned this a lot as we look at Tabe again, who I don't yeah. know how he's going to have energy tomorrow, but I'm sure he'll find he'll. it. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and luckily, he went to the right side immediately. It was like 10 seconds from the game. Anyway, yes, look the at the ref. Yeah. Way too early. <laughs> I wonder if, I mean, <laughs> that is the best. I, I oh, absolutely love that. Oh, chat, I love the, the tweet you sent out also. 
Yeah, so Tabe, uh, for those of you who don't know, has been around League of Legends for an extremely long time. Mm -hmm. He played NA solo queue before there was a Chinese server, so That's a crazy. lot of the old heads like Kobe and I have played against him. But he was Uzi's support yep. in the 2013 World Championship after they took down Fnatic in the semifinals. Shox interviewed him on stage. He actually made a lot of really controversial statements at the time <laughs> about... Yeah the way China treated esports players, et cetera, et cetera. This guy has been around for so long, and I feel like has done such an amazing job with this year's BLG team. You heard the interview on stage. He's more articulate now, even though he was articulate then, and it's just really cool to see. There's also an incident uh, on the desk. He also so leaked IG strategies at Worlds 2015. That does, He's a little matter. bit of a walking meme sometimes that, yeah, as yeah. well, but a hell of a League of Legends mind. And the pedigree speaks for itself. Yeah, and I also want to highlight what he said, right? Like, him feeling bad, even though I think even Doran could laugh at it at that moment. I really think it shows the type of class uh, and the respect he has for his opponents, which is a part of great sportsmanship. Absolutely. Um, I want to close the book on T1 here at MSI, and I want to pull up this graphic because we talked so much about how T1 gets to all these finals. This is actually the first time that they don't in something that they've started in. And I just wanted to outline that one, because of course that is horrible for T1, T1 fans alike, and for those players. And on the other hand, it's really hard to buck that trend if you are against them in these matches. It even goes further back because even though it's not this exact roster, in, they were also in world semis, right? One game away from making that in 2021. They also were one game away from beating Dalmon in spring 2021. Oh, actually, I think Dalmon did win more decisively there, but they were in the final nonetheless. And, and what I really want to highlight, as I am obviously shattered at the loss here, is that I hope that the players can take away from this that the pressure that they're feeling isn't, isn't you know, if they're able to find a way to deal with this, if they can find a way to, to really work around that, um, then I think that this roster can actually live up to what we see domestically. And this is something that's very easily said and very, very tough to actually do. But the carrier with head in his hand right yeah. after the, yeah. mm -hmm. the second draft. Yeah. From talking to these players, domestically having a great time, but as soon as we go to internationals, every single interview is, we need to be first, we need to win, we haven't won in so long, we need to win. And it just gets worse and worse the more you focus on that. Yeah, and I, I do wonder what their outlook is going to be for the World Championship, how they can recover from this, because every time it happens, it's going to weigh stronger on their mentality. And I also do think, like, even, even thinking back to what we were saying before the series, maybe we were actually giving them too much of the benefit of the doubt in this tournament, right? They had a five-game series against Genji. Mm -hmm. the, the way they lost the original series to JDG that went five games, games two and three where they kind of went off of one really big team fight, that series was fairly heavily in the favor of JDG. So to see them fall here when you have the benefit of hindsight isn't extremely surprising, but it doesn't make it any less disappointing. No. For T1 and the LCK. And you're always going to for T1 as the brand, as the legacy with Faker in that mid lane. We saw it with that Ari Charm as well. Uh, they have earned to have the benefit of the doubt, but BLG really don't care. And this yeah. is why they're in the final, and this is the first ever LPL versus LPL international final. It is monumental in so many ways, and we get Knight versus Yigao. Uh, okay. so, so this <laughs> is Knight versus Yigao is inevitable. For people that don't know their history, they're friends, they're actually from the same hometown, they play on the Net Cafe team together, and they face each other in LPL finals several times, and now they are facing each other in MSI finals again. Yes. Uh, is the outcome going to be different as a, this is the continuation of what we threw up in Countdown Chat? Yeah, the MSI dominance from the LPL, aside from that one 2019 G2 win, which obviously couldn't fit on this LPL versus LCK graphic, uh, is pretty <laughs> it impressive. It happened, guys. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Always going to have happened. But you can see the LCK having a little bit of a rough go of it in the actual grand scheme of things regional rivalry and it's guaranteed that we have that LPL champion for this year. We just don't know who it is yet. Exactly. Um, and yes, Tabe, he was part of the RNG coaching staff that won MSI two years in a row, 2021, 2022. Uh, it's crazy. So let's take a look at our bracket, our finals tomorrow. I mean, one half of it, a lot of people had predicted. The other one, I'm not so sure. <laughs> no. The million dollar question, is the outcome going to be different than what we have seen in the LPL spring playoffs, as well as here at MSI? Yeah, I will say, it's not just me. Everyone I've talked to that regularly watches the LPL, LPL analysts are like, 
we were not expecting BLG to be here. Um, this, these are two teams that are, again, incredibly familiar with each other. They faced each other several times in the LPL playoffs. Um, one thing that is super interesting, especially from today and yesterday, has been BLG's approach to drafting. I think they've been very smart in terms of what they want Elk to get on, how they want to separate team fights. Um, we, we kind of already talked about how they kind of bent to the hyper carry meta, but then pulled it back and we're like, we're still going to play what we want in the top lane. We're still going to focus on these things in team fights. And I do think, again, JDG is a team that knows them very well and can similarly play that style with 369 and Kanavi on their top side. Hey. So it's going to be another bloodbath. Yeah, and we can update the graphic and we'll play it tomorrow again. Not supposed to beat JDG, but as said already, they, they really don't care. I, I just want, we'll talk about it tomorrow as well, I'm sure, but mm. looking at that bracket, this is the first time also that we get multiple representatives from the regions at MSI, which makes yeah. everything a lot more difficult, especially that we have those best of fives, which really separate the weak from the strong. Uh, I think that context, in that context, it's even more insane that we get a BLG JDG final, and it just shows how much they had to go through in order to get there. It's a very stringent competitive format. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This will be the fifth best of five that BLG wins if they win the final. It will be the fourth in a row that JDG wins if they win the final. And they're against the top two teams from all of the major regions in a double elimination best. You do not get more thorough than this no. in LOL Esports for deciding who the best team at the moment is. They've got the best warm up going into the finals, but to preview the grand finals tomorrow, Lore caught up with JDG's Kanan after their win versus T1 on Thursday in the Verizon Game Day interview. And we're back here at MSI for the Verizon pre-game interview. I'm here with Kanavi to talk about the finals and taking a closer look at what to expect here. Thank you so much for joining me ahead of this game. What have you learned throughout the tournament with JDG? 네, 인터뷰에 응해 주셔서 정말 감사드립니다. 이번에 JDG와 함께 이번 MSI 치르시면서 어떤 점을 배우, 배워가고 계신가요? 어 일단 이번 메타가 그 약간 원딜 지키기 메타인데 이제 그런 메타에서 중요한 게 탱커의 스킬 자신나 포지션 좀 많이 중요한데 그런 걸좀 많이 배워가고 있는 것 같아요. I think right now this meta is all about protecting your AD carry. So as a, um, if you play tank, you have to know how to do damage or like throw your skills and also take the right position. So I'm learning those things. And would you say that you figured out the meta rather quickly with the team? And how much can you experiment? I know that you can't say too much, want to save the picks, but do you think we may see some new picks rising for finals? 그렇다면 진동이 조금 메타 분석을 빠르게 잘 마친 것 같으신지 그리고 남은 기간이 있는 만큼 조금 더 다양한 좀 변칙적인 이제 실험을 하실 것 같으신지 뭐 전략적인 부분을 전부 오픈할 필요는 없지만 간략하게 혹시 우리가 좀 다른 전략 접근을 할 수도 있겠다라는 생각이 있으신가요? 메타 분석은 대회 전에 거의 무조건 다 준비해 오긴 하는데 이번에 항상 대회 와서 상대방이 좀 잘하는 픽이 있으면 그걸 좀 자르는 느낌이고 다른 픽이라고 하면 상대방이 그 일단 아직 두 판이 남았기 때문에 결승까지 그래서 그걸 다 보고 정할 것 같아요 아마도. So about the meta, we actually like finish working on the meta, like having the best read possible. But whenever we see a good pick from the opponents, we also try to follow it. And about experiments, maybe uh, we want to wait until uh, we see two games that it's left, two matches left for, until the finals, and we'll decide. Of course, maybe some new learnings uh, through the remaining games. JDG was one of the most expected team uh, here at MSI 2023. Do you feel like you played to the expectations fans and experts had from you guys? 사실 징동이 정말 이번 MSI에서 가장 기대를 받는 팀 중에 하나였습니다. 본인 생각할 때 징동이 팬분, 팬분들과 전문가의 그런 기대치에 맞게 좋은 경기력 보여줬다고 생각하시나요? 어, 저희가 일단은 스크림에서 좀 뭔가 대회 같은 모습이 안 나와가지고 좀 많이 걱정하긴 했는데 역시 그래도 저희가 대회에서는 조금 더 잘하는 것 같아가지고 그래서 팬분들 기대에 맞는 플레이인 것 같아요. 그래도 좀. I was a little bit worried because our screams are not going great, but I was kind of relieved that we were able to still perform at our best level on stage. And so I can say we were playing up to the fans' expectations. There's always surprises when it comes to scream. Last question for you: When it comes to the finals, talking to 369, he promised the LPL that you would take the W and bring the trophy in China. How much do you think you can bring uh, the trophy to China and win MSI here? 그렇다면 결승전에 대해서 여쭤보고 싶습니다. 369 선수가 이번에 꼭 기필코 우리가 트로피를 중국으로 가져오겠다, 꼭 우승하겠다라고 다짐하셨는데요. 카나비 선수는 어, 확률을 어떻게 보고 계신가요? 음, 일단 그 
처음으로 이기는 게 이겨보는 게 중요한 것 같아가지고 저희가 좀 뭐랄까 걱정했는데 이미 저희는 T1을 이겼고 그래서 전임이 해봤으니까 이기는 걸 다음 경기도 꼭 이길 수 있을 것 같아요. So I think I think getting the first win really matters a lot. And now that we just beat T1, I'm pretty confident about it. Yeah, getting in the right headspace. And that's all for us here in the Rio Grande Sul. Jisun, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And back to your shocks. Thank you so much. Um, in fact, I believe uh, it was said probably that's probably going to be T1 or Gen G. I yeah. think everybody thought that, that it was going to go that way. I thought it was going to um, be T1 Gen G. You thought so too. At one point. At one point. Yeah. Wow, you're an analyst. It's a little wrong. Yeah, yeah, a little wrong. It happens. Um, a little and, bit. you know, we have to say goodbye in just a second. And I know that there's so many people who probably just they wanted T1 JDG as well, right? Because mm. also in terms of mm -hmm. kind of. Um, the global atmosphere and LCK versus LPL, but uh, this is going to be amazing. And it's really cool because now we have something to look forward to again at Worlds, that big revenge that has to be taken. And also just a great celebration tomorrow of what's going to be, in the end, the best League of Legends that we could see here because they've both deserved it. And um, the BLG storyline is just amazing. Tabe said it, didn't know if they had that many fans. We know that comparatively to even some teams in the LPL, like an EDG, like mm -hmm. an RNG, that's not the case, but I've seen so many neutral fans in this audience yep. day by day by day have more and more love for BLG because of the Grinta that they show on the stage and it, it's been a wonderful story to follow. What I also think is really cool that obviously uh, I was joking a lot about oh we get T1 Gen G again but a lot of the, the uh, second tier matches that we had or round two were regional rematches and from start to tournament to now like how differently do we all look at the fact that <laughs> it's JDG BLG and if you told me that before the tournament I'd be like but it's a rematch but is it really like are they still the same teams the journey that specifically BLG has made I think is so insanely cool and I'm extremely happy for tomorrow me too final note Emily another fun thing to track I'm just just warning <laughs> you guys uh, a lot of times when LPL teams face each other on the international stage it just devolves into chaos like I, I remember very specific RNG EDG match, I yeah. believe the year that EDG won the title. Um, so an LPL versus LPL rematch is just a precursor to all of the wonderful things you can see when you watch the LPL. So watch the LPL, it's always entertaining. Yes, we keep telling you, watch the LPL and watch it tomorrow because we'll be back here for the MSI 2023 Grand Finals between JDG and BLG, a historical LPL showdown. Can BLG finally take down JDG and finish their incredible story? See you then.